Welcome to the Market Pulse podcast from Equifax, where we break down the latest economic and credit insights to help you navigate today's business landscape. Hello, welcome to the Market Pulse podcast. I'm your host, Tom O'Neill, and I'm a member of the Risk Advisory Group here at Equifax. Collectively, this team supports our clients by providing guidance and insights on how to navigate uncertainty and uncover hidden opportunities. Today, my panel of experts includes David Shoika, Jesse Harden, and Tom Aleph. Welcome, everyone. Glad to have you guys on board. Hey, Tom. How are you? Hello, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about the, the credit and financial stresses facing consumers. Uh, now, that's a pretty broad subject. So what we plan to do is, is actually address consumer stress as a theme that we're going to be carrying through a series of podcasts that we plan on rolling out over the next few months. Over that coming series, we'll, we'll discuss topics such as what lenders can be doing to address the various impacts, how these impacts are different for different consumers, and what kind of information we can use to distinguish those consumers who are thriving from those who may be struggling. Uh, but we want to start off today by discussing what we mean by consumer stress. Uh, what's, what are some of the factors causing that stress and how we see that stress taking shape? But before we begin, let's kick things off with a quick economic update from David Fieldhouse, uh, Director of Consumer Credit Analytics at Moody's Analytics. David? The U.S. economy is showing robust performance, with third quarter growth expected to be nearly 3% and year-over-year growth approximately 2.5%, which surpasses the economy's potential growth of around 2%. So these are very healthy numbers. Uh, Despite this, inflation continues to moderate, largely due to productivity gains that we're seeing. Consumer spending remains solid, with households using their excess savings accumulated during the pandemic to maintain their purchasing power today. However, the high inflation has put significant pressure on this purchasing power, particularly for lower income households. Despite this, higher income households still have nearly $1.2 trillion in extra savings. The strong economy is largely due to consumers who have been careful with their spending, nearly causing a recession, nor inflating the economy uh, too much. The, the composition of spending has changed, with more spent on goods and less on services, and this may not revert back to pre-pandemic trends from what we're seeing in the recent data. Rising interest rates mean households will have to pay more on their debts. However, most household debts have fixed interest rates 